They've taken another heart, they've put it in my heart. That's how much heart there is. What's up guys, it's Will from EDM Tips. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make progressive house in the style of Ben Boma and Anjuna Deep. So in the last couple of months, I'm really pleased to say that these videos that I've been doing on particular genres and styles of artists have been blowing up big time. So thank you so much for the support. Anyway, I've had loads of requests for doing in the style of Ben Boma. So that is what I decided to do today. I'm going to be using Ableton 10, but you can use any door to follow these techniques and you can download all the samples and the project file for free below this video as well. So today we will be covering the kick and bass. the percussion and atmosphere, the chord progressions, big feel. melodic arpeggio and some mixing and arrangement. If you want music production tutorials like this each and every week, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure you never miss one. Smash the like button if you dig this video and without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, so the first thing to do once you've checked that you have your dinosaurs ready is choose the perfect kick. And we've chosen 124 BPM because it's that Anjuna Deep Ben Boma type speed uh, or tempo. And this kick, I've included it for free in this sample pack below, which you can download, but it's got lovely low deep subbiness. And it's also got this high end tick, which is gonna help it pop through the mix. So all I'm going to do, and you can do this in MIDI as well, but I'm just doing it in audio because I'm going to show you as much as I can in this time we have available. So simple, right? Everyone knows how to do that. I'm going to just going to put it to minus six. So when other elements are added, I've got some space on the headroom on the master channel, which is what we need, what we want. Now I've called this project progressive nows. <laughs> See what I did there? So next, it's all about the emotion when it comes to Ben Boma and these Anjuna Deep tracks in general, Progressive House, you know, it was my first love in terms of dance music. That and the rave, uh, rave like the prodigy. So I'm just gonna call this chords and we're gonna uh, just get a grand piano and we'll probably end up keeping that piano sound. So let's put piano and I'm gonna use Ableton piano. So I'm just gonna go to sounds and I'm gonna go to piano. And I'm just going to choose the normal grand piano that comes with Ableton. So where is it? Oh, I, I've actually downloaded like the piano pack, I think, uh, which was free, I believe. So come on, come on. There you go. Right now, this kick I know is in G. It's a kick on G. So I'm actually going to create this track in the key of G. Um, whether it's minor or major, it depends how I'm feeling, but let's just vibe with some, some notes. I'm going to work out some bass notes first and then work out the chords over the top. Okay, so I'm going to do it in G minor. Like, that's not complex, okay? So let's just draw those notes in. Whack them there. And this is in the style of that In Memoriam track that I mentioned before. And by having them kind of come in just before the beat, it gives it a bit of vibe already. So the third and the fourth, uh, sorry, the second and the fourth note are kind of playing before the beat. And I'll, I'll do it with this note as well. So we've really got some kind of movement and energy. I'm going to reduce the velocity so it's a bit more gentle and ethereal. And I'll just bump up the volume a bit. quite nice so now let's work out the uh the chord notes that we're going to have on this so i'll just close that down we don't need the velocity showing much anymore 
And you can use my template technique, which I've linked to in one of these others, um, and one of these other videos. If you're using FL Studio, you can use the scale thing, or you can draw in all the notes in the scale, move them to the side in Ableton and press fold. So let's do that quickly. So these are all the notes in the key of G minor natural. So I'll just kind of drag these in and then we'll move them to the side and then we'll press, in fact we'll, we'll just duplicate these one octave up and one octave down and I notched it to the side by pressing the left cursor key but if I press fold now these are just the notes showing in the key of G minor natural. So. If we use any of these notes, it's going to sound good. So let's build up our chords by building them up, just skipping a note each time. But we'll have to move it up an octave because um, they sound a bit dodgy low down. So I'm just going to draw in the basic notes first and I will duplicate another octave up in my template. So I'm just skipping a note each time to make these chords. And then if I unfold I can decide whether they should be major or minor by just moving this, the middle one, either up or down each time. So I want the last one to be major because I thought the minor one sounded a bit dodgy. Okay, okay, on to the next thing is let's add some kind of reverb to that. But first with Ben Bomer stuff, they're quite naturally played. So he uses lots of orchestral instruments. So what I'm going to do to, you can either play this in if you're good with the piano, or if you're not, then you can manually hold the command key and just drag the notes so they're not quite on exactly on the grid. And that will give it a bit of more of a human feel. So they're not all playing it precisely the same. So if you heard there, you know, it's kind of one note hits before the others. So we'll just add some. And you could even, you know, choose different velocities for the notes as well, which would give it, give it even more of a human feel. But, you know, for brevity's sake, I'm not going to do that in this example. So here we go. And I'm actually going to extend that last chord, much like in Memoriam, which I'll refer back to several times. We're not trying to copy it, remember, but we are using it as an inspiration for the vibe of our track. So I'm going to consolidate that and make sure that loop's turned off just so I can drag that clip longer. And I'm just going to extend these last notes. And although I usually do mixing a bit later, I'm going to add a reverb here because I want to give it that ethereal feeling as quickly as possible. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use it in the channel as opposed to on the auxiliary channel. And I'm going to use this freeze function on the reverb, which is a pretty cool effect. So let's just get the reverb sounding nice first. nice and big, very spacey, um, and I'm going to put a utility to bump up the volume of the whole track rather than using this fader because I don't want to I don't want to use all of the fader up like this otherwise I've got nowhere to go if I need to go louder so I'll just put five decibels on there. And what we're going to do is automate this freeze function on and off so let me just 
kind of minimize that don't need those anymore so if we chose choose to automate and what this does is it freezes the reverb to go on infinitely but obviously you want to kind of switch it off before the next notes plays so this will give that cool effect that he's got in that track in memoriam you'll really hear it at the end as well so you can hear it's staying on forever Oops, I forgot to put it up there. So it gives it a really nice big feel. And if it's too much reverb, you can always just notch back the dry wet control a bit but that will do for now okay on to the next thing we have got bass and sub bass so the bass is really important in all dance music so let's get straight onto the bass we're going to take the bass notes from the chords that we've written so let's put bass in color it yellow and again i'm just using the stock plugins i will be using some of the sound toys bundle as well because they are an awesome third party bundle um, and you can get that from below this video as well and if you buy it through that link i get a nice little bit of commission which kind of helps me run the channel which is cool um, okay but you don't need it you know you can do it with the stock plugins um, but I'm going to show you one cool effect actually with one of the Sound Toys plugins that you can't do with the Ableton Stop plugin. Okay, call this bass. And we're just copying the bass notes from the piano chords and we're just going to paste them into our clip here. So we're just going to use the same chords, same notes. And we are going to use, do, 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 what should we use? Um, actually, that, because that, I'm going to turn off this reverb for the time being just because it's distracting every time I press stop and the freeze is on then, um, you know, it's an issue because I can still hear it. So let's use Wavetable. I'm just going to use a, st a stock sound from Wavetable. Uh, bass, let's try this first one. How does that sound? <clears throat> Okay, that's cool, but it's a bit high up, so I'm just gonna grab it all, Command A to select all, then hold Shift and press down to notch it down an octave. That's too low, actually. What I'll do is I'll split this bass into two and have the sub bass one octave below. But there's too many high frequencies, so I'm gonna notch down the frequency control. Okay, there's something going on here so i'll have to go into the matrix um have a look at what's going on uh velocity we don't want it affecting the frequency at all so let's turn that back to zero and there's some kind of envelope playing on the frequency as well so that's better That's more how we want it, nice and low. So we'll turn off this and let's work on this bass a bit. Now we want a portamento sweep between those notes. So I'm just gonna make them overlap a bit like this. You can see this note is overlapping this one. This note is overlapping this one. Then we make sure it's set to mono. Oh, it already is. And we've got glide on. So let's have a listen. So it kind of sweeps in between the notes. And at the end, it gets a bit boring. So I'm just going to open up the envelope, choose MIDI control, pitch bend, and then I'm going to do a pitch bend at the end of the bass. Um, just to give it some character.
So it's just to give it some extra character and emotion. OK, let's split this base out. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call it sub base like so. And I'm going to use an operator for this, which is a super simple synth that comes with Ableton as well. Operator. We just want a sine wave for this. And you can hear we need to make sure this is monophonic as well. At the moment, it's got six voices. We just want one. And it's not sliding between, so we need to add some glide. Turn that on. And you could choose the same glide amount, you know, 112, BP, uh, 112 milliseconds, just to make sure they slide at the same time. But it's too high up for sub bass, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab them and move them down an octave. Maybe not all of them, we'll see, until they're almost sub audible. See, if I move this one octave below, you'll barely hear it. So I'll keep that up. I might leave that one low because you can. You can just hear that. OK, if you've got good headphones or monitors, you'll hear that low bass note. What I'm going to do is I'm going to filter out the sub bass of our main bass sound. Otherwise, it's going to clash with the sub bass. So let's listen to that on its own. So the sub bass can now be controlled separately, see, or here rather. I need to make sure they're really pitch bending the same amount as well. So the pitch bend on this, uh, I don't know, uh, where is it? Well, anyway, I think it's two. I can't remember where it is at the moment, probably in MIDI. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, pitch bend. Yeah, pitch two. So if we go into the sub bass, we can make sure our pitch bend amount is two there as well. There you can see it defaults to five, so we'll just make that two. And that means they both go down at the same rate. There, so it kind of sounds like one bass. Now we are going to group them together and call that bass. And we're going to get that pumping with the kick using sidechain compression. So I'll show you how to do that really quickly. Um, and we're going to add more processing too, but this is what we're going to do at the moment. So sidechain compression. Um, then we're going to go into percussion and the arpeggios that make Ben Bomer's track so ethereal and lovely. So let's do this first because we're going to use this sidechain compressor on many of the track channels. So we're going to call that pump comp, pump comp. Open up the sidechain options here and we're going to create a little sidechain track. Now, what I would usually use is Steve Duda's LFO tool, but because I'm trying to do this in as much just using the Ableton 10 plugins as possible, I'm going to do it like this. So rather than using a kick for the trigger, I'm going to use a short, sharp hi-hat because the kick lasts too long and it's going to duck everything too much. So I'll go to samples, then I will go to, actually I'll go to drum hits and closed. And then I'm going to put that into a simpler. Where is my simpler? Ah, I don't have it there. OK, I'll just use a sampler and then I will convert it to simpler. Now I'll go back to my samples and my drum hits. Give me my drum hits, boy. Here we go. So I'm just going to program them in on the kick, as you'd expect. There we go. Just on every beat. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And then I'm going to go to the routing because you can hear it now. But we don't want to hear the tick. So I'm going to change it to sends only. And then minimize it. And that means we can just refer to it when we need it from these other devices. So sidechain, audio input from SC. As you see, I've called it SC for sidechain. Uh, 
and then I can just use attack and release to get it pumping in the rhythm that I want. Cool, okay, that's working nicely. So now we can just copy and paste this whenever we need the sidechain compressor. All right, on to the next thing, percussion. So Ben Bomer's percussion is very delicate. There's, again, some lovely atmosphere in there. So we're gonna add some techno, well, some progressive house atmosphere as well. But first, let's get the drums going. So we're just gonna go drums. I'm gonna use a drum rack for this. Uh, so I'll stick that there. Uh, just call it drums and we will be working on this bass to make it even bigger and beefier so don't worry about that uh, yet so we'll put drums in first thing to uh, get is the clap that would be the main thing so I'm gonna go to my uh, drum hits got loads of drum hits all organized nicely and I'm gonna use a let's see Lots of different claps. I'm going to use this, which is from a classic Lin drum machine. Um, and yeah, I'll just put it on on every other beat. Uh, like sound selection is so important, guys. It's, it's worth it's worth spending the time on getting the right sounds. If you need to, you can put Ableton into hot swap mode like this. When they're programmed in, just press this little button here. And now I can just press up or down and load in different ones to preview them and you want the one that sounds you know right for what you're trying to achieve that's the sound I want okay now I'm going to add a little bit of reverb to that and I'm going to do it on an aux channel so I'm just going to create an auxiliary channel um, on Apple it's command alt and t and then I'm going to call that room for room reverb and I'm going to whack on a Ableton delay, uh, Ableton reverb, and I'm going to program the drum to have that reverb on it. So you can press this little button here in Ableton, turn on the routing, turn on the returns, right click, create return chain, select room as your output, and now we have the room reverb, and we can control it by, I'll just turn those off by turning on this S, this send thing. Hear yeah, that? So I'm going to pump it up nice and loud, too loud, so I can get the decay at the right time. And I want it quite subtle, so I'm going to take off some of the high end of the reverb. Sounds about right. So it's, it's quite subdued. And I'm going to put a an EQ after the reverb just to make sure there's nothing happening in the low end that's going to muddy up the mix when we get to that. Cool, okay, on to the next thing. That would be the hat sounds. Hat sounds, I'm going to go to the current project because I've already saved some of them just for the speed of it. So I'm going to use this one because it's got lots of lovely tonal qualities to it. And I'm just going to program it in super simply. Let's call that hat. And we're just going to loop this little pattern. And we can add a little bit of, I want it a bit softer. It's more of an atmosphere than anything. So I'm going to use classic. I'm going to choose one voice so they don't overlap and then just tweak the attack slightly to soften it. So it's more like a shaker almost. And then you can add some of this reverb too, which you can't really hear because the reverb's got a lot of the high end rolled off. So if we listen to the reverb on its own, you can kind of hear it just. So just add all these little bits add to the thickness and the richness of this style of music. Okay, on to the next thing. We are going to add a bit of a kind of ride rhythm as well, which we are going to have come in at a particular point in the track when we get to the arrangement, which we will do. 
So I'm going to go to my drums again and drag in this tambourine sound. It's called a tam. And then add in a little rhythm, really simple. give it some more, some more groove and then repeat that <clears throat> excuse me I'll put one there as well and then we're just gonna duplicate that I'm gonna add some interest to this so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of delay and so it can bounce around a bit ping pong Turn reverb right down. So now the tambourine's kind of bouncing left and right a bit. I'll just make sure there's no untoward low end in there, which there is. So it's just cleaning up the sounds as we go. Okay, on to the next thing. First, let me know if you're liking this, guys. Give me a hell yeah in the comments below because that lets me know I'm on the right track. I'm doing something that you like. So I'm just going to write what time that was. 52, 11.52. Um, cool. On to the next thing. These awesome, awesome arpeggios, which is going to start giving it some real character. So if we just... Right, arpeggio, we're going to do this manually and I'm going to do a sample. I'm going to use a sample for this and all I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a simpler. You can use a synth for this, but as I said, I'm just going to use a sampler just to show that it is possible. And I got this crappy piano sound from decades ago, so I'm going to use this. But make sure it's tuned to the key of the track. So if I use my chords as an example, because it's a grand piano, middle C. Now my sampler. Yep, they're, they're in tune. I might detune this up a tiny bit. And now let's draw in this arpeggio. So we're going to do it in the key of G minor natural, of course, because that's what the track is. And this is going to be a really subtle effect but it's very important. And this adds some harmonic content, so. It's gonna sound really crap at first, but we'll make it sound good, I promise. And you can use the template technique here as well. So if you kind of go to the right and, can I see my template? Maybe I already deleted them. Oh, okay, so I won't do it, but you can draw in all the, um, you know, all the notes in G minor natural and use the template technique if you want. I want those playing really quickly. That's kind of cool. So it's playing a seventh chord, but really quickly in succession. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just repeat that and then we're going to make it sound cool. And this is going to be playing underneath the piano chords. Maybe I will have that minor. No, I'll leave it major. And now we can add some of that room reverb to this. Can't really hear it, so I'm gonna add its own reverb. I'll create another aux channel, and I'm gonna call it all. And this is gonna be another reverb, Ableton reverb, so I can just copy and paste that, but with a much longer decay to add a second reverb that everything can use if we want it. 
So we need to turn off this high diffusion because we want to hear the high end in this now. And I'm going to add a utility because the Ableton reverbs are usually quite quiet. So it's more atmospheric. And again, you might go in and kind of take off some of the decay at uh, the attack. And you can hear it already start sounding, frankly, awesome. And then you can start bouncing it around a bit with a bit of auto pan. So let's get one of those on the go. Auto pan on the arpeggio. So it bounces round a bit. And we are going to get one of these pump comps, the side chain compressor, remember that from earlier, and put that after here. We might not use all of those notes from the chords. So next we want to add some atmosphere. Now this is important as well. So I've actually got a recording that I took when I was DJing around the world a few years. I was in Thailand, I think, and I recorded it. And I've got loads like this um, of just different field recordings from atmospheres that I've, I've recorded around the world. So the one I've got was from a jungle. Where is this one? Here we go. And I just made a really short loop out of it. And, you know, it's got crackle and noise in there. You can hear me kind of accidentally rubbing the microphone. So I'm just going to repeat that. And again, you can get this in the sample pack below for free. I'm going to color it green because it's an effect, a bright green. Um, and I'm going to just listen to it with the chords. And these chords, I'm going to add some extra reverb. Oh, no, I'll, I'll put the, the reverb that we did earlier. Now, you can hear that jungle sound has got the cicadas doing the really high kind of screech. So I'm actually just tuning the cicadas to the to the key of the track so it's in tune and you might want to take out some low end and then use the pump compressor again and get that sitting nicely with everything else might even take that arpeggio down. Now I want to beef that bass up. So this is where I'm going to use the Sound Toys decapitator. Um, students of my masterclass actually get 50% off all the masterclass, um, sorry, all the Sound Toys stuff anyway. Um, so you can check out about my masterclass below this video. So you can add, you can hear it's adding some richness. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to group the kick and the bass together like so. And I'm going to, you can just bust them if you're not using Ableton, but Ableton's got this cool group thing. So now the kick and the bass. So there's the bass bus, which has these two separate basses in it. And then that in turn is in the kick and bass bus. So it's kind of nested. And this is so we can gel the kick and the bass together and getting, get them really sounding fat. So I'm going to put another decapitator on the kick and the bass bus. And then tweak it. tiny bit though at this stage and then I'm going to use this free plug-in Bark of Dog just to add some lower harmonics. 
So I'm going to boost it right up, then tweak this till I hear where the sweet spot is. Where it's resonating. About 60 hertz, so then I'll dial it right back and then just add some in. So this is with none of our kick and bass processing. Just a bit weaker, a bit less, less gutsy. And actually this bass, the upper bass, so not the sub bass, we can actually spread that out using this other free plugin called the, ba -ba 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 -ba, what is it called? It is the Ozone Imager. And there's, I'll put a link to it below here as well. But you can spread out the bass now. That's already pretty wide actually. There's not much need for that. I'll just turn that off. So forget that. Um, all right, cool. On to the next thing. Is the strings. As I said earlier, Ben Bomer's tracks are known for their beautiful orchestration. Um, so we're going to use some real strings. I'm just going to use the ones that come with Ableton as well. And we're just going to add some extra notes based in that same key that we've been using, which is G minor natural. So let's uh, just put strings here. And then let's choose one of the string packs that come with Ableton. This is Ableton. Um, where are they? This is the top one. I can't remember the suite, Ableton suite. OK, strings. Let's get something lovely. That'll do a nice strings ensemble. That's French for ensemble. Uh, right. Let's get some beautiful heart melting chords in. I'm just going to play along with the piano chords. Uh, I'll roll off some of the low end of the piano as well so it's not clashing with the bass. And now let's play some strings. Yep, that's what I will do for the second part of the uh, the sequence. Let's just stop that playing. Mm. So it, this is kind of going, going to be building into the repeat of the progression. Again, just using notes from within the key of G minor natural. I'm just making this up as I'm going, guy, uh, as I'm going. So it might not be the best production in the world, but it's just to give you an idea. Let's add some hall reverb on the auxiliary. Next, we are going to do a, another little riff, just kind of rolling things along in the background. I feel it needs more rhythm. So um, I'm just going to do another piano, actually, so it gels in nicely. And we're going to play with those piano chords as well. So then we're going to do a vocal and a couple of effects and then some arrangement. I know we're running out of time, so let's get this going. OK, piano. I'm going to delete uh, the reverb. I don't want that. It's just going to confuse things. I'll delete the utility. And I'm just going to repeat two notes over and over for this. So that's 
this one I'm going to repeat over and over and I'm going to play it so we've got some nice, you know, I'm actually really playing it so we'll have some discrepancies in velocity. Okay, I screwed up a bit at the end there, so what I'm going to do is split it in two, consolidate that, then I'm going to actually quantize it so it's nicely in time. But we want this sat right back in the riff, uh, in the mix. So we'll add some reverb. And then repeat it. Okay, so we are almost there. Now we're going to add some extra kind of excitement. So what I'm going to do for this is actually I'm going to sing something. So sorry in advance, but I just want to give it some texture and then I'm going to convert it into a kind of female voice by using formants and pitching it up a bit. So here we go. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Simple as that, Bosch. And now let's put Complex Pro on. And play with the formant, see if we can get it sounding a bit more like a girl, a woman. Mm, yeah. Mm. I mean, you know, it's a bit dodgy, but it does the job for the sake of this example. Mm, yeah. I'm just going to add a bit of EQ, make sure the low end's taken out. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Put some whole yeah. reverb on. Cool, that's sounding pretty good. Now I will just add a couple of bits of effect, so like something to start the phrase with, and then we will get on to making this piano better, and then a bit of arrangement, then we're done. Cool, so effects. What effect should I use? I will go into my current project. I will just use this crash and just to add some interest. And what I can do is actually use a, um, a delay. I'll use echo because that's quite nice on a new auxiliary channel. Let's stop that piano reverb. So new auxiliary channel, I'm going to call this delay. Let's put this echo on there and I'm going to make that that kind of symbol crash echo a bit. So let's choose notes, not dotted, one to four. Where is it? Crash, here we go. Ping pong. Okay, there's a high filter. There we go. So now it just runs on a bit longer. But if I wanted to just have that um, play the tail rather than the initial impact, I could automate that 
like this. Show automate in, in new lane and then just run up that automation after the initial transient. And then we've got this effect. So it's just the kind of ringing that's delayed. As opposed to the initial transient. See, so this is a bit softer and nicer. Okay, with these piano chords, let's see what we can do. What I'm gonna do is just do a bit of an ad lib. Because it sounds nice, really high. Someone's got my heart and they've opened up that heart, they've taken another heart and they've put it in my heart. That's how much heart there is. So I hope that gives you an idea about how to start developing this progressive house sound. As I said, I've done this all from scratch, so it's not perfect, but I've shown you some really useful tips if you've enjoyed it let me know, smash the hell out of that like, bu like button, give me a hell yeah in the comments below and download this project and all the files. I'm actually going to, I'll do some more work on this so it sounds better. But in terms, in fact, in terms of the bass line, the Ben Boma bass line, what you can do is, let's have a just listen to the kick and the bait. You can actually add a uh, the second oscillator, you could bump that up seven semitones and then you get this cool effect. And then you could automate the frequency as well, uh, as he does in that In Memoriam track. So that's pretty dope as well. Ah no, one more thing. We are now going to do a bit of arrangement very quickly because it's all about arrangement as well. So I'm just going to copy and paste some of this and we're just going to develop it slightly. So you might just have the arpeggio and the effects in the background, you know, like the jungle effects. So let's try that. <laughs> And that might um, be improved even with a bit of bass line. But you could turn off the sidechain compression for that so it's less pumpy. And you'd probably want to, you know, take the bass level down for this break. And then it would go into, you know, the very uh, minimal beats. I'd probably take some of those notes out from the chords just to make it a bit less. With the strings, you wouldn't have those repeating, so you could add some ad lib there as well. And you wouldn't you wouldn't overuse that uh, vocal as well. But you can see how you you'd start off with that lovely, beautiful, ethereal. 
um, atmosphere at first and then you go into the beats and the main idea. And then just develop those um, drums over time as well and then you go into another break but if you do want to if you would want to arrange this into a full track that's when you could use a reference track to get a, a better arrangement from it and I'll link to a video there as well so there you have it guys I really hope you enjoyed this Ben Boma progressive house tutorial don't forget you can grab all the files below this project completely free if you want to find out more about my masterclass then there's also a link to that below as well where you can get 50% off sound toys and loads of other plugins too thanks for watching until next time stay safe cheers and happy producing